Well, good evening and welcome to Passage to Profit. I am Kenya Gibson filling in for Richard Gearhart. And I'm Elizabeth Gearhart. I work with Richard at his law firm, Gearhart Law, and I'm not an attorney. I do the marketing. And I'm not an attorney either, just an <laughs> FYI. And, and on tonight's show, we have Emmy Award winning media advisor, Vinny Potestivo. Hope I got his name right. He's going to be here with us to talk about how he helps people get their claim to fame. And then we have Kurt Davis with KD Alive, Sunrise Ventures, Kakuma Ventures. He's really got an interesting story and a lot of cool things going on. So stay tuned for that. And after him, we have A-Rock Castillo with BPM Music and BPM Supreme, which is a really cool thing if you're a music creator. I'm going to let him explain it. It's pretty technical, but it's really great for creators. And that'll be our show. Instead of IP in the news today, since Richard is not here and Kenya is a marketing genius, we are going to have a marketing minute. So Kenya and I are going to talk about something you can do right now today for your business by yourself and why it's important. And if you don't want to do it by yourself, there's a lot of people that will do it for you. So Kenya, please explain what we're doing. Well, I don't know about the marketing genius part, but I definitely love a good idea. And I definitely love to help people grow their business in all different kinds of ways. So we're going to talk about the importance of Google reviews and your online reputation today. And Elizabeth, you and I were chatting a little bit earlier about like just how important it is for people to leave you a review because that's like your first facing to the world as a business owner. Right. And the other thing is, I don't know how many people have Google on their phone or have a Gmail account. So it all goes through your Gmail account. But I will tell you, I give reviews. I get emails from Google that say, you just went to Vinny's studio. What, how was this place? And then I'll leave a review. So it asked me for a review. So for myself personally, I only give good reviews if I don't like something, unless somebody has really been incredibly nasty to me, I just won't leave a review. Uh, Cause I feel like there's some karma there. So I give good reviews to the places that I like. So, and I'm considered a local guide because I've given so many reviews, but I, the, re so the Google reviews are becoming more and more important for getting noticed online because Google is putting more emphasis on those. So how do you find out how to do that? So this is the technical part I was talking about. So first of all, you have to have a Gmail account, a Google account, and you go into your Google, you, you just open, you type in Google and get Google up on your computer and you go up to the upper right corner of your screen and you'll see your favicon which is is that how you say it kenya is it favicon? oh i have no idea favicon you see your favicon i think it is there you go which is a little representation of your website for instance so or your google account so mine is my picture and for gearheart law it's just a big g right so next to that is a little grid with nine dots so you all have seen those nine dot grids right if you click on that grid, you'll see a bunch of things that you can do with Google and you'll Google my business will be in there. And you can go into the business part on Google and that's where you can list your business with Google, make sure everything's right. And also reply to reviews if you do get reviews, which we, it's very important. So I rep reply to all of the reviews that your heart law gets. So that's just something you could do yourself today to give you more visibility on Google if you haven't already done it. A thousand percent. And I would say even the bad reviews that someone might receive, the importance of replying and addressing matters like publicly is super important because you never want to have a bad review there that you've totally ignored and you haven't paid attention to, right? So testimonials are powerful. Uh, and there's this great book. It's called The Little Red Book of Selling by Jeffrey Gittimer. And there's a great quote in that book that says, when people, when you talk about yourself, it's bragging, well, but when people talk about your business, it's the truth. So that applies to Google reviews and any other online reputation that you're building out there for your brand and your business. So super important to make sure you have testimonials up there and people can talk about your business. Right. And if you go into your Google account, you can get a link to send to people to leave you Google reviews. And what, what we did for Gearheart Law is you can, well, you might have to get somebody that can help you with this because it gets a little bit technical, but you can put a picture, you can put that link behind a picture and send them the picture and say, could you please click on this and leave us a review? So, or you could just send them a link and say, could you please leave us a review? So if you do get those bad reviews, what you wanna do, and 
a lot of you may already know this, but you want to find all your clients that love you and you want to ask them for a good review. <laughs> so, so yeah, for sure. All the, all the good reviews will definitely outweigh, outweigh like a potential bad one that you might have. Right. So you kind of get that score up there. So normally at this point, Richard would do Richard's round table where he would ask everybody for their comments on this, but I'm, I'm going to do Richard's round table or Kenya, you could do Richard's round table. Why don't you be Richard? Okay. So we will go to Vinny. Vinny, what has been your experience when working with clients in terms of like testimonials and reviews, reviews and that such? Yes, I love the, the Here's the good news on bad news and the bad news on good news, right? The bad news on good news is that you have to ask for positive replies. That's the bad news is that we actually have to put energy out into the world and say, hey, I know everything's working great. Just stop stop the greatness for a moment and just translate that with your little fingers or maybe voice note it and, and record this moment of greatness and share it with me. The, the good news about bad news is that the more good news we have, the more ability we have to stand out. With bad news, we don't have to ask for bad reception. We don't have to ask for bad reviews. Unfortunately, we know that's sort of coming our way. And the only way to really offset that is two, twofold. One, create a neutral place. And Google does a pretty good job at creating a neutral playground for opinion. So if someone wants to share their opinion and it's leaning towards one way or the other, if they come to Google, which Google says, uh, your opinions matter and this content matters. And we know that that feeds the algorithm, you know, that, that they're one way, one way to stand out. The other way I wanted to point out reviews, um, whether you are a business owner or a patron or a business owner who is a patron, reviews are a great way to stand out. I, I, I am a generally speaking positive reviewer on Google, <clears throat> except for one dog groomer in Dumbo, Brooklyn, but y'all go find that one. I'm gonna drop that <laughs> Easter egg out there. I felt, I felt very passionate about representing something. So I, I put that out there, but I get, I get giggly and I get like, I get warmth when I see people positively commenting on that, uh, not negative, but stern feedback, honest feedback that may have saved, you know, their dog from uh, um, something that wasn't safe for one reason or another. Um, and, but, but what I do to stand out is make sure that people know where I'm coming from. So I'm not just leaving a, a small, tiny one word review, no thumbs up. I use the review as an opportunity to let people know, you know, as someone who's recorded uh, thousands of hours of, of programming in New York and spent, you know, probably hundreds of hours casting animal footage specifically, I found this to be uh, off putting. And I, I give that context into my feedback and that allows to be honest, the reader to be able to say, oh, well, not only, not only might I recognize where he's coming from, but also what, who is that person? How does that? So I, I, I find a way to make those reviews be uh, discoverability moments for me as well. Oh, that's good. That's good stuff. And I would just add to that, you know, in terms of feedback, like it's so valuable as a business owner, like you want to know what's going on with your business. And sometimes if people don't tell you, then you might not otherwise know what's going on. So that that's super helpful. Thank you for that. Kurt, Yes. Anything you want to add? You know, I can add reviews from like a personal standpoint as well as a company. Um, yeah, I did B2B software for a while and it was very important to have very uh, in-depth reviews, like very kind of the goods and the bads. And so sometimes you have to say a, a little bit of honesty to show that there's some authenticity in, in your reviews. And so um, and then just for recently for my new book, I've been trying to get reviews <laughs> and it's quite hard to get people to, to read your book and get a review. So not only are you asking them to spend several hours, but then they have to like kind of think about it. So I often send them knowing who they are. I usually send them some information and say, you know, maybe something along this lines and then you can add in. And then so they so they do that. But like I, I do echo the sentiment that you're using a lot of effort to get this out in the world to so that people can have some uh, people who don't know you can verify what you've done. And so, uh, but it's worthwhile because I think uh, those reviews are very uh, helpful to strangers and people who don't know you. So I think mm -hmm. it's a, it's a good exercise to do. For sure. Have you ever thought of incentivizing people to give reviews, like maybe offering them like a free, like ebook that didn't, you know, take you too much time to put together or something in exchange for leaving you a review? Uh, I, I, uh, I, you know, 
I have. Sometimes I go to the extent of actually just like sending them the book or uh, trying to, you know, really, you know, get, you know, give something of, va of value to them, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so, um, uh, so yes, uh, a little bit more than an ebook, but, you know, try to do, you know, even sometimes free audio books, because you know, Amazon will give me like 50 free audio books. So I'll send those out to people and uh, if they help me out. So, so yeah, that's cool. A rock. Yeah, I mean, we're, for example, with us, we recently launched a new product um, here in the company. And um, immediately when you launch a new product, even Apple has um, technical issues, right? When they first launch new software or anything like that. And so we, we had some hiccups um, that we needed to fix immediately. And those reviews actually helped us identify some of those technical issues. Um, and I think it's important because it keeps the internal team um, on their toes because you want to make sure you get those good reviews and in order to get the good reviews you got to perform at your absolute best um, I think that um, me personally as an individual I'm bad at leaving reviews because I'm just always on the go and even though I have great experiences at some of the you know restaurants or wherever I go it's I find it hard for me to go back and and, and do the review. Um, that's just like one of my one of my things that I, I want to improve. You know what I mean? But but from a business standpoint, I think I think it's important. I think it's important um, because it does keep the the team on their toes. You know, for sure. I'm guilty uh, as charged when it comes to leaving reviews as well. But I'll tell you what worked one time. I was at a restaurant and they're like, "Listen, we'll bring you a free piece of chocolate cake." if you leave us a review and that usually works. So <laughs> just saying, yeah. I'm but all, see, for, the, my, I'm all see, for the bribe. <laughs> but see my, yeah, that's what I was going to say. But then, then at that point it becomes a thing where now you're now the, the business is almost bribing people to take action versus just being a genuine where it's like, Oh, you know what? I had a great experience. Let me, let me provide a, a great re review. Right. Yeah. Um, well, in this particular case, it actually was really good service. I, I just think the the call to action for me was the cake. Right. So it depends on the situation. But I hear you. Yeah, I don't think yeah. bribes are necessarily a bad idea. If because if somebody tried to bribe me with cake and I thought the food was terrible, I'd say no. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I guess I, on, on careful that, that word. <laughs> yeah. I'm, Today. If that restaurant were to say, here's a piece of cake, if you'd like to leave us, you know, uh, you know, a review, now would be a good time to do it while we fetch your free piece of, you know, so it's all definitely right. in the positioning. Um, A-Rock, you bring up a great point about the barrier of entry to getting those reviews. Um, so maybe some, I'm just spitballing here and throwing, throwing mm -hmm. something against the wall. Maybe some of the things I would say is... Um, hey, if you do a gratitude journal, if you take five minutes in the morning, and if you're one of those people who has this built in system, then squeeze my moment of generosity into when you're already giving it out. Um, if you're not, maybe one of the ways we can become better reviewers is to be honest, if it's not on my calendar, it's not going to happen. So like, put a 15 minute schedule once a month and find something to be great grateful for you'd be if not just those 15 minutes of silence to participate in like this gift of gratitude and then the last thing i wanted to say was um uh kurt the the i, I think you're you you had a point when you were talking about about uh asking for these reviews and i think that if if we put it in and I'm, again i'm not saying i'm just spitballing here if we put it in context if we say, hey, look, these reviews matter to me because more people will see positive reviews and I'll sell more books in the first month. That will make me have a bigger impact. Amazon will give me a special little mark for hitting this mile marker and we could all get there together if one person in this, you know, were to sort of move forward. But maybe put it into context because what you don't really want is the review. What you want is words in that review that you can put into action. And that also made me think of like, when we get those reviews as business owners, if we're lucky enough to get one, yeah, we can reply back to them. That's almost standard. I think the way to elevate it would be to reach out to them and say, hey, thank you for the review. Do you mind if I take this review and use it in some of my promotional materials, right? Because just because they gave us a review doesn't give us the right to use their name and likeness in our printed collateral. Like we still need that approval from them. And that those just might be other ways to incentivize them without needing to 
like A-Rock points out, gift, gift them with cake or incentivize them in any way other than just being part of the story, you know, subscribing to and supporting me in the way that I know I'll be able to take these reviews and make them transactional. That was excellent. Yeah. I mean, I know we've spent a little bit of time on this, but it is a super important right now for any business owner to really think about these reviews and really make sure that people are seeing you in a really positive light. Because honestly, if you don't have good reviews, people will not hire you these days and Google will not put your business up there in the top tier. So, so anyway, I think we're ready to move on to our interview. So Kenya, do you want to introduce Vinny and say a few words about him? Yes. So Vinny Potestivo, as I mentioned earlier on, has won an Emmy, which is amazing. And he helps clients leverage their media exposure, find fame and make an impact. And Vinny's worked with some really, you know, top names here. So I see Sharon Osbourne. Uh, he's worked with Diddy, Carson Daly, Snoop Dogg, DJ Clue, who I work with at Power 105 here in New York City. And yeah, we're so excited to hear from you, Vinny, and what you're doing for your clients. Oh, DJ Clue Minotti, a big yes. shout out to that guy, by the way. <laughs> uh, what are, what are, by the way, as you're listing some of my favorite people in my current, in my current playlist that are uh, gems of my life, the, I'm just overwhelmed with like the, the, the stories, the lessons that I learned from these people, the, 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 the way that I learned the power of collaboration from Snoop Dogg. Or mm. the way that I learned the power of investing in yourself from Nick Cannon, uh, the power of focus and standing out from Beyonce. Like I was in the room when these greats were coming through MTV in the late 90s and early 2000s. And I, I don't take my time there lightly. And uh, I'm happy to say that, you know, Nick Cannon, Wild and Out, uh, The Challenge, TJ Lavin, like I've got, I got two out of the three old guys on that channel yeah. <laughs> on that yeah. network 20 years ago. And I never was one to think of le legacy. It wasn't something, a word that wasn't shared in my family. But when this word popped up, you know, as, as, as most buzzwords do, I sat back and I was so, I've never been more proud or confident in the, the group of talent that I helped enable and propel to become massive storytellers that have changed our lives, that have changed TV, that changed the economy, just from storytelling. It's, it's so powerful. Definitely. Well, so well, I work with Mr. MTV himself, Bob Pittman. So, oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. I, I get the MTV days Ooh. and how important they are and still are. I feel like, you know, MTV is just iconic, right? It, it set the it, stage for everything music and entertainment related. It really, it, it literally, you say it set the stage. It, it created a platform for a whole new genre of media called music videos. And then, and then MTV went out and secured deals with labels and said, look, we'll give you a couple of thousand dollars, but we trust the artist. So they're already good at making audio. Let's let's give them a couple extra thousand dollars and make some video and let's play it. And for 20 years, by the way, it worked for MTV because because everyone in TV thought that if MTV is doing it, we can't do it. You know, this weird, this weird, well, if someone else is doing it, we can't do it. And to all y'all business owners out there, like this is my red flag waving. Like if someone else is out there doing it, it just means that it's viable. It means there's an audience, there's money, there's energy. Someone has already spent money on educating people what this what this even means, and I think that that's why uh, you have Facebook has such huge success after MySpace, and you, I can go on and on and on about you know how many times I've heard people say, "Oh, I didn't want to do it because it's already been done." Oh, I don't want to have a podcast. There's four million podcasts. I'm like, how many poems? How many books? How many TV? This is not stopping the reality TV market. And the coolest thing about podcasts is we own it, not the network. I believe in the power of people, truly. I saw what we got to do at MTV in the late 90s. We, we produced Osborne's and Newlyweds and punk before punk turned into Catalyst and Ashton ran with his production company on those. It was a very unique way to collaborate with artists. And, um, and how lucky was I to, to be the, the database slash like talent guy who, who knew how to, to do outreach and, and, and data management on people. Um, and media and, and I was right place, right time. But uh, I don't take that time lightly. And again, the impact we made was was ridiculous. And well, I learned Vinny, from the best. Yeah, Vinny, I have a question for you. So we get notes on you from our, our oh boy. program coordinator here. And she had an idea um, that she probably got from talking with you. But it was about getting discovered and being more discoverable. So I mean, oh, I'm, yeah, if I want to get discovered as an artist or get discovered as a podcaster, let's, so let's say I want to get discovered as a radio show co-host and podcaster, because this becomes a podcast the next day. 
how do I do that? Oh, yeah, that's a brilliant question, by the way. Um, and, and it's changed. 20 years ago, I think we had to increase our visibility to increase our discoverability. And I think the thing I love most about what social media provides for us and this the decentralized world of media, like podcasting is decentralized, meaning we own the files, it goes on a server, we share it with places and we can pull it down if we want. That's that's not how TV or Instagram or, or YouTube necessarily works. Once it's out there, there's a digital copy of it out there and you release certain rights. Now, discoverability is visibility with the action of sharing. If visibility doesn't have the action of sharing attached to it, and by, by sharing, I mean, if I'm visible and I don't say, well, I have a podcast, listen to the podcast, or I have, a, I have a class for free that I'd love to support you on that journey. Or if you're looking for a podcast, if you're launching a podcast and you're looking to be an award-winning podcast out of the gate and you think, well, I haven't even put out an episode yet. What awards could I win? I'm here to tell you there are over a hundred awards that you qualify for. And by the way, some of them you pay for to be nominated for and people think that that is bad um there's no one that goes around in hollywood tapping beyonce on her shoulder saying um miss beyonce you're not here your nine grammy nominations no you pay every single producer on every single track for every single nomination that's out there it's a business and i think the reason why people win awards the biggest reason why people win awards is to be discovered to stand out amongst a group of super talented people and if you think about it there's like this weird piece of shame and ego sometimes associated with award, especially I think with podcasters, because we look at this almost as an individual sport, not truly as a team sport, you know, that, it, you know, if you look at tennis as a, as an individual sport, but realize it takes a community to have made that sport be what it is. And I think podcasters are very similar. Um, and, and, and you don't need to have more visibility to have more discoverability. But mm -hmm. I love that idea of paying. It's an application fee, basically. Yeah to get thank an award. You, thank you for your consideration literally means thank you for the consideration of my financial remuneration for your potential check <laughs> on the uh, approval of my content. Literally, that's what thank you for the for the consideration means. But that's mm -hmm. how this all this works. Because I remember years ago, like this, these magazines, they still have them, the top yeah. 100 dentists in New Jersey. And our neighbor was our dentist. And I was like, well, wow, you should be in here. He's like, yeah, you know what it costs to be in there on that list? <laughs> oh, interesting. Well, so what you're so so with press and listicles, what you're referring to, there's so there's this been this boom of councils. Forbes has a council, and when you see the word council next to a media platform, it means that the media platform has licensed their name and space. So yes, I can give you an article on Forbes.com slash council slash this slash that slash bippity bop slash boop slash Vinny Bodicevo. So when people come to your page, you can have a link to Forbes that says you were published on Forbes, but that is not indexed on Google. You will not be searchable. It will not be a discoverable find. The, the, what, the, the uptick to what you're talking about is one in foot traffic. So in a localized market where there's tan tangible magazines, right, where, where, where the local foot traffic and obviously his brick and mortar where that matters, there, there's going to be a circumference of people who need to understand the businesses. Um, uh, but but I think that, that that's different than winning a communicator award, a W3 award, uh, a telly award. These are awards that we qualify as podcasters, whether we're hosts or guests. And where's the are list also, of those? Where, where can oh, you yeah. find those? Oh um, yeah, uh, vpe.tv on my website. In, I have a free creator hub, first and foremost. I, I, not only am I gonna share information, mostly tactics, I, I make sure that I have all this documented. So everything I'm sharing is supported, by the way. Um, I have a list of over a hundred awards that I think are worthy of, of noting. You know, if you, have a, if you have a newsletter, a website, if you're a marketer, if you've figured out a unique way to stack technology together, you know, maybe you've, uh, if this, then that, maybe you uh, email triggers this, there's actually an award called the stackies. And I think that's pretty, it, it just, and for the, for the front line, you know, uh, uh, early adopters, they can certainly un relate to wanting a stacky award, just, you know, duct, duct taping and scotch taping a system together before, you know, it's ready for mass consumption. There's, there's pride in that. And these are ways that we can stand out. They're little tiny flags commonalities that we can um, share with each other but they're big data points you know when a network is looking for when the tamron hall show might be looking for a legal correspondent they might go 
to the best podcast in the legal category and look for lawyers who are already naturally finding their voice, figured out how to frame a conversation and publish content. By the way, what, what a great skill set to have as a podcaster. That's like, that's what that, that's what being a podcast, in my, in my opinion, that's what the word being a podcaster signals to the media industry. You're professional, not your, you, you've worked on your communication skills. You're ready to add value. And there's, there's an element of production to it. Um, different than the influencer market part of the creator economy. And I have to, you know, point that out because both are, both are individually owned and, and independent voices. So do you think there's a difference between visibility and fame, right? And if so, what is that? And does fame always equal success in your opinion? Uh, uh, so no, is and, and that's not an opinion. That's a fact. I'm going to put it out there, right? No, fame does not always equal success. Um, and, and, and no, success does not always equal fame. Both are journeys, to be really honest. Both, both are temporary terms both are in and of the moment and do not describe something that is forever and 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 sustainable without additional energy um visibility is not the same as fame visibility is the act of being seen being i think being famous is the act of being celebrated to be honest i think that's where that word celebrity comes into play is for one reason or another they're great at being good or bad at something right like we love we love Jessica Simpson in Newlyweds because she was everything that that we knew she was, but nothing that media wanted her to be. Like it was her own coming of, of age story, and she stopped media at a time where we were only giving artists three minutes to explain themselves on MTV, and she got thirty per week and created that space. Um, but that fame didn't equate to the level of success that Jessica Simpson went on to have, right? Like the the show, the TV show, possibly I would say made her more famous it gave her more visibility but did it translate you know not until the act of sharing came into play where people can share and buy tickets to the dukes of hazard they can buy boots at macy's they can buy now we're, and by the way not only am i buying them for myself i'm buying them for my mom i'm buying gift card i'm sharing now i'm able to share something that she's created for me and i think that this is a a, a big signal to success for celebrities who and you might understand why they often play in fields outside of their expertise. It's why is Paul Newman, why, why does my generation know him as the salad dressing guy? He made table time talk possible. He was in movies that made table time talk possible then. And he said, well, what's up? What else is at the table when people talk, are discussing my movies? And he elevated that conversation. And I think that, that the more we can do to elevate the experience, to support the experience of people after they've been affected, by our impact, I think that 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 helps with fame um, and and success. If meaning conversions, like just to throw that word in there, like that, that's the word in between fame and success that I think is is if, if that's what we're talking about conversions, being a loyal fan, uh, supporting you know listening to your podcast, buying your products. What this, these are things that we want, whether we're celebrity brands or business brand owners. And I think I can draw a lot of parallels between creating sustainable talent brands and, and, and building sustainable business brands that now have a creative component thanks to social media and, and modern media, podcasting you know, included, this, this narrow cast world, simple cast world of podcasting and, and a broadcast world of media. Awesome. Awesome. Well, very well put. We have more coming up on Passage to Profit with Vinny Potestivo when we return from the break. Uh, stay tuned for more Passage to Profit. Welcome back, listeners, to Passage to Profit, Road to Entrepreneurship, normally with Richard and Elizabeth Gearhart, but today with Kenya Gibson filling in for Richard Gearhart and Elizabeth Gearhart, we have been talking to Vinny Pustivo, <laughs> who, who is a media advisor and has worked with a lot of really famous people and has kind of figured out the secret for getting your podcast noticed. And we're picking his brain on how we as radio show hosts and podcasters can move up so people really want to listen to us and notice who we are. So the first part of our conversation was great. If you missed it, of course, this radio show is a podcast tomorrow, so you can find it there. But Vinny and Kenya were just talking about the difference between fame and success. And it was a really interesting conversation. Now, we have many other things to pick your brain on. So um, one thing, one question we have on our list here from our producer or our show coordinator is 
how do I pitch my story to mass media? And another one is what does talent development look like to you? Oh yeah. So, so the great question about how to pitch your story to mass media. Um, the answer is in rephrasing that question, to be honest, uh, you, it's, it's, unfortunately, it's, it's, this is an annoying answer. It's about networking. So the last thing I want you to think is that this is a transactional moment that you'll never hear from me again. You don't even know me as a valid voice. You have no clue what my credentials are. And I'm bombarding you with this thing that I think is so important that I'm pitching to mass media. I, I think that if we pitch ourselves as sources and not focus on the story that we have a lot more success. And I've had a lot more success in getting quotes from my, my podcast printed in newspapers that have been picked up globally by locking in and making sure that, that the person that I'm pitching to knows that as a source, not only do I have existing quotes, but I let them know what's coming. So when I was launching my podcast, um, so, so my podcast, I sit down and I talk to the people that we've referenced uh, Mandy Moore, Jamie Lynn Sigler, Danielle Fischel, the, the woman who played Topanga in Boy Meets World, uh, uh, people, Ja Rule, I just sat down with and recorded Christina Milian. And these are these are big names, Generation X, uh, the millennial audience that rushed home in the late 90s, early 2000s from MTV know them. When I launched my podcast, I, I wanted to stand out. And I didn't think that if I were to flex my Rolodex that that was going to make me stand out as much as, as if I were to able to flex the relationship I have with people. So instead of having 52 different celebrities on my podcast every single year, I have 12 celebrities a year and I record four to five episodes with each of them. And that gives me a month to be present with Mandy Moore. So it's November, I have three episodes with Mandy Moore coming out. So this gives me a month with Mandy Moore, by the way, to be able to put, push content out. And she can pick and choose whatever she wants to support on social media. There are a lot of other much more important conversations that are happening on social media, to be really honest, than, than my podcast. I'm happy to add to the creative conversation around um, some of the conversations that are happening on, on social media. But by, by me creating that relationship and time relationship with her and her audience, it lets me have a, a deeper penetration to the, to the conversation at hand and have a more meaningful relationship with the audience. Um, also, in terms of publishing the episode, you know, uh, many of us think of publication as like you know, hitting publish from Podbean, Anchor, wherever it is, and the, pod, the podcast sort of goes out. I want to throw in a couple of other words um, because you, you mentioned you know, how do you even stand out as a radio host syndication is one of the things you're doing right now right your own you own the show and that there's a there's an exchange for time and advertising and, and you're ultimately bringing the most valuable piece of the equation which is the content and the relationships and everything that the entire in, that fr infrastructure relies on but if you're not lucky enough to syndicate your entire show Maybe you might create a two minute segment and you can start asking some of the podcasters that you connect with. Hey, would you mind having a, two, can I have a two minute repeat segment once a month? I'm going to, I'm going to sit down with this person. I'm going to sit down with these types of people. I'm going to have these types of sound bites that I don't think you're going to be able to get and I can produce them for you. So for me, it, it's access to some of the talent, but, but syndication is big aggregation is gigantic right now. If you are converting your podcasts into blog posts, then you're already winning because this is a huge data point in, in our industry that's like hurting all of us. It, 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 Google does not know yet as much as they wanna know about the podcast data. Oh, I just got, uh, I'll, I'll share a big tip actually. IMDB now allows you to upload your podcast as intellectual property. So as an, uh, an owner of IP, I can now upload my podcast, if it's already aired, to IMDb, the internet movie database owned by Amazon, that will 100% have an impact in your search engine result protocol and, and pages, as you see on Google. It, it has completely, by the way, changed what shows up for me. And my podcast is called I Have a Podcast. I called it something that we, we all kind of say. And I now rank because I, I entered into... Amazon to IMDb. Also, by the way, IMDb is a place that converts the data point between my production company and my podcast. IMDb is the place that converts the data points between my Emmy Awards and Communicator Awards and W3 Awards with my production company and with me as an owner and producer. 
not only does IMDB do that, it gives me the ability to write in my taglines that rank on Google, an unlimited amount of access to upload promotional content. So if you're making videos and photos for social media to promote your podcast, like IMDB is just sitting there waiting for you to upload this and it literally will change your Google search image results. And then the, the best two parts, the final two parts are credits. Uh, I get to get credits alongside of all my guests. So if you go, if you were a fan of This Is Us and you went to the This Is Us page and you went to Mandy Moore's page afterwards, you would see she was on podcasts and you would see that she was on mine. You'd also see she was on Jimmy Fallon and, late, and a lot of other you know, uh, uh, podcasts as well. I bring that up because these big giant TV shows are doing exactly what I'm talking about. They have segments, social media segments built into, Jimmy, you can point them out, Jimmy Fallon, you see it very easily. They have these social media segments built into the infrastructure of the show. So they don't have to repurpose content afterwards. They get to pre-purpose it. It's already shot with the intention of landing on social, which is how the, the proper music was used. Maybe you'll notice, by the way, in TV, our fonts tend to be a little bit smaller. When things are meant for, for digital, the fonts are a little larger, so you can start to spot out when something on television was created for TV, but with the intention of being distributed you know, on, in, in that podcasting world. So aggregation, aggregation is a big way to stand out. Uh, aggregation is culling through content. So there, there's a great aggregator called Q, Q-U-U.co, actually. It's a free, if you go there, it's free. And you can say, I want, I, I want 10 blogs about podcast marketing. And when you log on, that's what you'll get. And it's AI that picks, you know, what the blogs are. And if you like it, you can share it to LinkedIn, Google, Twitter. And it's, it's a pretty awesome, as I said, share is always like the universal action. So it allows you to share it. The thing I like pointing out to podcasters is how to get into the aggregator. Because if your podcast, if your blog is being discovered at a point where people are looking for podcast marketing, they're not, they don't need to find your guest and your artwork and all the other stuff that we focus on spending so much time and money on branding. We're giving them exactly what they asked for. So, so uh, vpe.tv slash QUUU is like the way to get to the back end of Q. And that's how you can add your blog content to aggregators. I, I have something tied to I have a podcast.com. Um, which is my my podcast website, and I actually took my podcast website. Um, here's another tip, and, and anyone could, anyone who's posting at least ten blog posts per month can do this. I um, I subscribed to be a publisher on Google News, so now I have a podcast is a Google News verified publishing platform that I now have my website going out to, which means other news organizations are pulling from my RSS and getting. I'm basically set up as a source. You ask, how do we pitch as this? How do we get our stories set up into media? Set yourself up as a source. And if you don't have the guests that I have, it looks like this. We do this in TV. It's called an upfront. Hey, here are the five people I sat down with. Here are some quotes that I thought were awesome. As I look into the future, here are two people or three people I have confirmed. And here's a short list of five hopefuls that I'm going after. How, what kind of questions, what kind of answers, what kind of feedback or quotes can I get from these people to help you out? Meanwhile, here's what I'm having. So it's always a little bit about what I've got in the past. And, and I'm showing them that it's, there's more in the future for them to trust me as a source. And, and that, that really helps move the needle because the biggest issue I think in mass media is validation is confirming sources um, because there's so many voices that are out there now. And right. um, so Vinny, that was incredible. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I was just dunked in a pool of mass information, <laughs> amplification, <laughs> aggregation. Yeah. So, so my question to you right now, though, is do you work with individual clients? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny when you said I work with famous people, I'm like, yeah, they are now. Like, that's, <laughs> it's, it, by the way, I sound like my, uh, my, my family when they're like, oh, you work with Beyonce. Now she's a big star. Of course she's a big star. She's Beyonce. I'm like, yeah, but when I worked with Beyonce, we put her in her, I got, I was a casting assistant that got the audition Beyonce to be in Carmen, a hip opera, her first solo anything in the, in the midst of Destiny's Child angst. I was the dude that got the script to her father, Matthew Knowles and mom and penetrated that layer and said, there's a really cool opportunity for her to stand out. And I, I kind of, I know you're looking for it because we've had conversations. So 
here you no know, here it is wow. and, and again yeah. i learned i learned from from the greats and i feel like i was uh, uh the access that i was given to deals to opportunities that i saw could and couldn't happen just based on what we asked for made me change and i think that's why i'm passionate about about now media now um i don't want people to rush in this shark tank world of selling products i you know i, I launched my podcast i want ads I launched my podcast. I want to sell it. And I'm here to say, hold on to that. Hold on to that so tight because there's nothing more valuable than your creative output and your words and your likeness matter. The, the representation over perfection, it matters. And, and how we work together as podcasters, and I'll get off my soapbox on this one, it's really cool because we're not necessarily podcast experts. We're experts in our industry right. who connect over podcasting. Like podcasting fractures the economy. Uh, yes, there is a podcast economy, but I'm more excited about the way it fractures. It, it supports people in multiple uh, 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 pillars to be able to work side by side to collaborate, you know, next to each other. Again, well, the Vinny, power of people. Yeah, Vinny, I'm, we're out of time for this interview, but wow. So we have to have you back on. I know Richard would love to pick your brain. He's going to kick himself for not being here, but we're going to go to a quick break and then we're going to come back and Kenya and I are going to talk about our segments and then we're going to talk to our other presenters and Vinny, I hope you can stick around and help yeah. ask questions and bounce ideas around. So that has been amazing. So thank you. Listeners, you are listening to Passage to Profit, Road to Entrepreneurship with Kenya Gibson, filling in for Richard Gearhart and Elizabeth Gearhart. That was Vinny Postafito. I don't know. I probably said his name wrong. Vinny Testaverde. No, not really. Anyway, we'll be right back. So, okay. Um, Can I run to the restroom for two seconds? Yeah, go ahead. So, Vinny, we can just have a little chat while we wait for Kurt. But, Vinny, that was probably more pertinent information, ag actionable, pertinent items given to people that i've ever seen anybody do practically in this show what do oh you gosh think, and it was all free i know <laughs> that's why i'm like what do people get when they work with I'm you like <laughs> <laughs> well it's a lot easier because i don't have to explain it to be honest when you work with me i just kind of do it and you trust it like it's uh the product looks different uh when you work with me and i if i'm creating podcasts for you for example it's not that we don't have the relationship and you don't even want the relationship where like you need approval and can i get it can i get is it gonna it's you trust that it's gonna be al dente mm -hmm. <laughs> perfect you know ready to go out of the gate and 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 i try not to um uh, and 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 we're and 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 then I'm trying to figure it out. To be really honest, uh, I've worked one on one my entire life. Uh, I relate to podcasting because this is what I've done in reality TV casting for my entire like talking to people, recording it. <laughs> I'm just not used to hearing my voice. Usually in TV, we cut my voice out. So, <laughs> well, you have a you have a good voice, and I feel like you're a natural sharer, which is why I think things work out for you when you are open to giving people information and helping them win. I feel like universally that all just makes it way it's way back to you so i appreciate right. you we appreciate you well, sharing as much as you did because i know that's going to help a lot of listeners oh yeah, it's going to help us um, richard's going to go crazy over this stuff <laughs> <laughs> when i tell him about it that's funny um, yeah so okay so kenya i guess i'll bring us back since you're doing the first segment you're doing mm -hmm. um power, power move. move okay three two one Welcome back, listeners. This is Passage to Profit, Road to Entrepreneurship with Kenya Gibson sitting in for Richard Gearhart. I'm Elizabeth Gearhart. We just heard from our guest, Vinny Podestivo. He had amazing advice for people that want to break through the noise and get noticed with their podcast and their brand. And if you missed it, it will be on our podcast tomorrow, which comes out after the show. But now it's time to move on to Kenya's segment, which is Power Move. Kenya, who's the Power Move for today? So excited to give Power Move to French Montana, who has just been honored with the Innovator Award for raising over $226 million for African healthcare. So according to reports, he was honored earlier this week with the 2022 Pencils of Promise Gala after helping raise more than $226 million for healthcare in Africa. And sources say that French was given this year's Innovator Award for funding the Budando Subi Hope 
Health Center, which is a healthcare source for new moms and their children in a region of Uganda. So French Montana is our power move for today. What a great person, really. I mean, healthcare and being healthy is the number one thing, right? Oh, definitely. And I'm big on the, the, the healthy moms and babies thing. So that's always yeah. important. Absolutely. Well, wonderful. Thank you. So now it's time for me to talk about my startup, which for those of you who don't know, it's a video directory of small businesses online. And I filed my patent application, as you know, right now I'm working on the trademark application. So I changed the name because for a number of different reasons, and I made sure that I got approval of my new name from Kenya because she is my creative genius. She's my consultant for anything creative. And she also okayed the logo that I came up with. And so I'm going to file those now as an intent to use trademark. Well, I'm going to have the law firm file them. So I kind of reserve my spot and then I'm having my new website developed. And so we're going to use the new trademark and logo in my new website. But if you're not, if you haven't used your logo or your trademark yet, you can file intent to use, which helps you a little bit. So that's where I am with my company right now. But I, I'm really excited. I went to a big networking thing yesterday. Uh, it was a women's networking event. I hadn't been to a big networking event since pre-COVID. And it was really fun. And I made some great connections. So for those of you who like to network, it's I think it's about time to get out there and do it. People seem ready. So anyway, now we are on to our next presenter, Kurt Davis. Thank goodness it's an easy name. <laughs> so Kurt is a technology entrepreneur. He's done amazing things with his life. And he's here to talk about his latest venture, KG Live. So Kurt, please tell us what you're doing and then tell us your story. Uh, yes, thanks for having me on and quite uh, intimidated by uh, what I just heard from Benny, and <laughs> uh, but uh, nonetheless, I learned a, a, a heap load, so I'm very grateful for that. Um, so, Katie Alive uh, is is what I like to call kind of uh, it was a hobby, and so as I had traveled over the last 20 years, working uh, mostly in business, uh, helping build startups uh, across the world, and 10 years in Asia, and and then uh, took some time off and went to backpack around Africa, went to 20 countries. Um, I just blogged and I like to write here and there and take some pictures. And then blogging kind of evolved into taking some more videos and learning how to do some decent videos. I'm not very good at it, but uh, then finding some younger people to do it with me. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and then just created a platform called Katie Alive, which was really... Uh, focus on sharing experiences, right? Like I, I kind of thought if we all kind of shared our experiences, uh, that would be a way to, to make the world a better place. And uh, one of the things I love to do is travel. I was also afforded that opportunity through business, uh, not just travel, but live uh, for 10 years abroad in different countries. Um, and I wanted to share as much as that as possible, especially with people who didn't uh, back in the US travel as much. So whether it was the food or how to learn languages or climbing Mount Everest or, or whatever that was, just, just try to share that. And so that's really what Katie Alive is about. It focuses on two or three central themes. One is well-being, uh, one another is travel and that intersection. There's a lot of people in different cultures who are, uh, find different ways of happiness and well-being than we do in the U.S. And then also entrepreneurship and uh, kind of what entrepreneurs around the world are doing. Uh, not just Africa, you know, not just the U.S., but Africa. Like, what do the entrepreneurs do in Africa to create better communities and lives? What do they do in Japan? What do they, what do, they do in China? So, um, so it's a, it's a little bit of a hodgepodge, but uh, there's no reason why it can't be. It's, it's my thing, and so I like to, to kind of just blog about what I'm doing at that moment. Um, and uh, that's what Katie Alive is. And uh, I just released a new book, um, and I have a book about Africa, and hopefully. Uh, we're going to work on a TV series about that. Uh, and um, so that's, yeah, that's what it is. Uh, yeah. That's amazing. So Kenya, do you have a question? Yeah, I was just going to say, can you talk a little bit about like the user experience and what people can expect to encounter when they tap in with the, the technology that you're using? So, so right now it's just, it's really simple. It's just a blog and uh, with videos and articles. 
Um, and I haven't used, uh, haven't done a podcast yet. And I don't know, don't know if I will. I've kind of ventured into podcasting right now through other people uh, just to get to experience it. Um, and uh, I have, we have kind of the projects are on the website. So we have two or three main projects. One is uh, 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 kind of a startup entrepreneurship center in a refugee camp, mm -hmm. which is actually going quite well. Um, and uh, they just won a big award and the, the main entrepreneur will be going to, to the UK next week to receive that. Um, and then we had a well-being type of platform we were building, which we put on hold. So, so right now it's just go there, search what you're looking for, whether it's travel or well-being, and then you can pull up articles and read it. And um, that's it. So it's really simple right now. Um, and uh, it will evolve, uh, but it's a matter of which kind of which direction do I take it. So I can see the gears spinning in Vinny's brain from here. <laughs> Vinny, what do you have to say about this? <laughs> um, wait, so I'm obsessed. Uh, and, and you said something that I love. And I, I literally, I had this aha moment about two weeks ago. We talk about podcasting. We know the value in it um, and, and the inherent amount of work that it takes to actually own a podcast and, and get it out there. Can I ask for permission, Kurt, just to throw an idea out your way? Throw, throw as many as you like. Strategy? Oh, cool. And by the way, I, you know, this media is very new for me. And uh, yeah. you know, I never thought I would be to this extent. So anything yeah, would no. be helpful. Yeah. It's the coolest thing ever. And I think I'm, I'm propelled to make sure people know of the possibilities that are out there that exist. Just because, again, when you're in the room and you hear certain questions, when you hear certain questions get asked or you, you realize you get nothing without asking for it. I'm, I was amazed at the things at MTV you had to ask. You have to ask for VMA tickets as talent if you want to get tickets. To the, you have to ask for things, right? <laughs> um, here's, here's my sort of favorite millennial podcast hack right now. Yeah. M because most of my clients that identify as millennials will also say they know the value in podcasting, but there's just the time is not there. Um, I love podcast guesting. Uh, what I would do is lean deeply into podcast guesting. What I wouldn't do is just answer any any um, request that comes your way. I would set, you know, a block it the first two hours, maybe a, a month or two hours a week and commit to recording and trying to get people to record when you can best record, by the way. So the lighting is right. The dogs aren't barking. The baby's not crying. My, my clients aren't <laughs> asking me where things are. So I know I have a, the space to be present. Mm -hmm. But here's the killer part. Uh, after after the actual podcast, and I do this now as part of my podcast growth strategy, I'll actually ask the host and I'll say, look, after this is done and after you've aired it, could I have this file and could I air it on my own podcast channel? Because I got to be honest, people who know me might listen to you interview me sooner if it was done in my house, you know, on my podcast in a safe space where they already know to go. And then if they like you, they can take the leap and go over to your podcast. So for you, my recommendation would be create a podcast of people interviewing you. Usually as the oh, host, wow. by the way, you don't even get that. You don't even get to give advice. You just get to ask great questions. If you had a podcast series where you were just being interviewed by multiple different types of people, point of views, businesses, you'll, you'll, you'll realize that the facts don't change and that the characters don't change, but the stories do. The truth. Oh, okay might even change a little bit depending on who's asking you these questions. And I think that listeners would sooner find themselves connecting with the person asking you questions. Oh, this is how, if we were in this scenario, how he might answer, you know, the way back. And it's just, it's a really cool way to, and, and then I ask, don't monetize it. So just don't monetize other people's content. But what you can do is put an ad, you're allowed in podcasting three ads, put an ad in there for them. And then also with all this great footage that I'm talking about, and even you now being a podcast guest, now that you're starting to receive files from these hosts, now maybe you can start clipping a 30 second podcast, what ultimately becomes an audio ad. And now you as a podcast guest have an audio ad that you'd be able to promote. And by the way, I, I use um, Podmatch. I don't know, y'all, you you, you, Podmatch, there's been, there's a couple of, podcast or networking directories that are out there for That's me. That's probably where we got you from was Podmatch because I know oh, yeah. we use Podmatch. So we have an assistant that helps us, which makes all this so much easier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, if you could get somebody to help you, even an intern or maybe one of the budding entrepreneurs to help you, Kurt, maybe you do it together with them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 
Well, he, that he has that right. I love that he, he landed on the who, not the how. I love that you said that, Kurt. You're like, I don't know how to record. So I just figured out to collaborate with people who knew how to do it. And I think you're, you're a neat call to find and collaborate with other people. I, no, no doubt will you be successful and collaborative. I think if you ask more, you'll get more out of it. So you don't have to do more. Hmm. Okay. Thank That's you for the advice. I appreciate That's that. That's great advice. Yeah. So, so what do you want people to know? Kurt, what's the message you're trying to get out to the world through everything you're doing? Uh, <laughs> it, it's a great question. I, I've, I've quite thought about that. Um, uh, you know, what's the central point? And, and it's, you know, thus far, I haven't had a, a major central point, but where it's actually evolved into is, is, is really how does, you know, the younger generation who's out in this world of trying to optimize for, uh, you know, living their best life through travel, through working remotely, through uh, well-being, not, not working too much, not overworking. You know, how, how can I share what I've done, that message, in a way that will help them or help anyone who wants to kind of live that kind of diversified lifestyle? And, uh, and so the message is, is this is kind of what I've done. This is how I've done it. And uh, these are the things I'm learning still at you know my age about how to uh, optimize my well-being through uh, and my life experiences through through uh, these type of uh, activities, which is travel, uh, mm -hmm. wellness, and and entrepreneurship. And you're uh, showing creativity. That's probably not said as succinctly as uh, as no. Vinny would probably say it, but it was uh, no, that was good. But you're you're. You're, you're really doing creative things with this too. Like I never would have thought of going into a refugee camp and teaching entrepreneurship there. I mean, what you're doing, I think is amazing and creative and out of the box. But Kenya, do you have a question or comment? No, I was just going to say that I love that you're in the travel and the wellness space. I think that that creates a lot of cultural experiences for people and moments. And that's what people are really into right now. So I think you have a really good opportunity to to Vinny's point, expand upon that content and really reach maybe that user who hasn't had all these different experiences. Like I have not been out of, I've only been out of the country three times, right? So, and I'm, I'm a, I wouldn't say fairly young person, right? But so I have like many more years of travel, but like, it would be great to have a platform like this to interact with, to kind of know what to expect, like what to look for, kind of where, where things are just because, you know, there's a bunch of people like me who are untraveled, right. Who, who want to be exposed to information and content that will be helpful. So I definitely think that that's a space um, to grow into that, that could be profitable for you and for the folks looking for that type of content. Yeah, hmm. it's, right. it's excellent. Well, unfortunately we've come to the end of this segment, so have to keep the show going, right? <laughs> So we're going to move right into A-Rock. So A-Rock has bpmmusic.io and bpmsupreme.com and A-Rock's world. But I think what he's doing is really incredible for the creative community. So A-Rock, can you explain what your business is and how it works? Sure. Uh, so BPM Music, we're a complete suite, music suite. Um, we create products that cater to the music creators when it comes to producers, uh, DJs, and soon for podcasters and YouTubers. Um, uh, and that's one of our latest products that's gonna be launching next year. Um, and with that product, um, so the business really started because I used to work in radio um, at an early age and I was pretty much in communication with, you know, Universal, Sony, Warner, and the rest of the major labels. And I realized, that I was receiving the music via email. And I said to myself, why am I working for uh, Clear Channel at the time and I'm receiving the music via email? This doesn't make sense. Like uh, this is supposed to be one of the top companies in, in, in the States and, and I'm receiving the music via email. This, this makes no sense. So I wanted to make my process uh, much easier because my job at the time was to curate the content and figure out um, to see what was trending to be able to present it to our, our music director and our PD at the time. And so what I realized is as a DJ myself at the time is that um, there's there needed to be an innovative way to solve the way that DJs discover music. 
um, by putting it in, into a platform online. And at the time, subscription, the only thing that was a subscription-based model was like 24-hour fitness and a couple other, other um, businesses. But Spotify was still not in the country. Uh, Apple Music was not around. They still had an iTunes store. Um, and so that's when I started developing BPM. Um, so it started off as a music platform for DJs. And over the course of the years, it's it's evolved into sounds for producers. And now we're creating our new product, which will be um, royalty free music for uh, the music, the, the creators that are creating content that need background music, similar to epidemic sounds and and music bin and all the other uh, websites. And so um, what we're doing here at BPM is we're just building great products. Most of our team members are uh, either musicians or people that come from the, that are in the music industry or have a passion for music. Um, and we're in between the, the music and tech. And we like to consider ourselves that we're just, we we come from tech, but we just love music so much that we want to bring that and and try to be at the forefront of 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 everything how the music industry is moving. Um, but that's that's what we're doing right now. Excellent, Kenya. Yeah, no, I love it. Uh, I used to work for Clear Channel, still do. It's just not Clear Channel anymore, right? Um, and I'm sorry, I messed up your name. I think I called you like a rock or something earlier. So a rock. I just wanted to make sure I put that out there correctly. In terms of the music licensing, how are you getting over that hurdle, right? Because I know DJs are discovering music on your platform, but like, what's their right to usage? Are they just kind of going to your platform to listen? Can they use any of the music? Like, how does that all work? Yeah, so we were actually, um, it's funny because um, when we first started, it was all for promotional use only. And we learned, um, I think the first uh, two years is that, as we were receiving music for promotion to use only, it was um, uh, we got into this rabbit hole by wanting to expand really fast and and going to the labels and say, hey, we're already receiving the latest music from your marketing department, your promotional department, um, but we want the back catalog, we want the classic stuff because we want to have the largest music library available online for DJs, and so um, one. They led to another. We end up in litigation department, and litigation's like, "Wait, you're doing what? You're you're <laughs> you guys are grabbing the music from our promotional department and exploiting the music." And so it was a big lecture for us. Um, growing pains. Um, the good thing is, is that we over you, we were able to overcome that, and we were able to get licensed. We're probably one of the only uh, music services for DJs out of the the hundreds that are out there that are actually licensed. Um, and right now we're actually, that's one of our biggest things is trying to fight the space into uh, with the labels and saying, hey, labels, you gotta make sure that everybody else is paying for the licenses. Otherwise it doesn't make sense for us to give you the hundreds and thousands of dollars that we give you guys every year. Um, so, and, and we're launching streaming too. So. To answer your your question, the um, the DJs um, when it comes to DJing, they're the first ones to find out about technology, but they're the last ones to adopt it simply because they use it for work purposes. So when it comes to um, performing, they don't want to depend on Wi-Fi. So so right now they still download the music, but um, we're one of the we're one of the ones that are going to come into the space and introduce streaming and giving them a reliable source where they can depend on when it comes to performing. That's great. Yeah. Vinny, what do you think? Yeah. I, God bless the DJ. I was in New York. I mean, if it was the DJs who introduced me to all the celebrities that were on their way into MTV that gave me that edge, to be honest. So shout out, shout out to those. They were always the Mavericks and super connectors in my world, to be really honest. Um, at a day and age where, unfortunately, the DJ has been replaced maybe on TikTok by the, what's it called? The, 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 the find page? <laughs> what do you call it on TikTok? Your explore page? How, how we look for music, you know? I, I have a question for you. Um, uh, say that I am not, I don't identify as an artist, but I am curious about ways to make money using sounds. Like, I feel like 
I feel like when everyone got video access, everyone became a videographer. And I'm wondering now that I can upload sounds, original sounds to TikTok or Instagram, and I know there's a way to monetize somehow. Uh, is there an easy way for people who don't identify as artists to be making money in sounds? Uh, or do you say, do you, do you recommend that people who want to contribute sounds that aren't looking for a professional career in sounds just to have fun with it? Like what's the, what's the mindset you might give somebody looking uh, to have success who doesn't or isn't like a DJ and an expert in their field? Yeah, I don't know how it works. Like, so for our space, um, we usually curate all the content and everybody who we work with our engineers that, that we actually um, either hire in-house or we hire them directly for a specific project. So it's not like a DSP or I'm not aware of gotcha. any platforms where people can just upload and monetize from it. Most of the companies will usually um, figure out what they're trying to accomplish the project and then they'll go out and hire the musicians or the or the the engineers to create those those uh, packets. Yeah. Yeah. As you say that, I'm realizing I just saw on LinkedIn SoundCloud is hiring an executive for uh, artist uh, loyalty and rewards program. And I'm guessing that might be the remuneration that artists are getting in exchange for plays in some way other than dollars, right? This like loyalty. I, I didn't even know that existed. So I just like, uh, I started going down a quick rabbit hole before this live because I was like, oh, this is, this is, this is how they get them with points. You get the same way when I get my, my manicure done and I get a little sticker on my card, <laughs> but it works. Loyalty, you know, you have to reward loyalty somehow. Right. Well, I want to shift gears just a little bit because it says in my notes here. So, I mean, I could pretend like I was really smart and had all this memorized, but <laughs> I like to be authentic. It says, Awark is also a prolific producer himself, releasing tracks with top Latin DJs like Music Junkies and DJ Morpheus, as well as high profile remixes for Bad Bunny, Daddy Yankee and Pitbull. Can you talk about that a little bit, a -Rock? Yeah, I mean, just coming... So I started off as a DJ. Um, I started off at the age of 12. Um, and at the time it was just, um, it wasn't common. I, now it, now it's, it's more common to see uh, young DJs because of technology and companies like ours that make it easier for people to have access to a, a large library. Um, back then it wasn't. So I was able to, to get to me, I would stand out from the rest. And that's why I started working in radio when I think when I was 17 or something. And, and um, I, early on, I was just always very passionate about music and learning all the software that was out there, um, learning how to use Pro Tools at the time, which is, um, which I'm, actually is, is funny enough, our company just did a partnership with, with Avid, which is one of the largest software companies in, in music software. Um, and and that just you know now with having BPM gives me the access to to really um, establish a relationship with a lot of these artists, managers, label executives, because we have a product that people are a fan of, um, and that's been the cool thing about working in this space is that not only do we do we get to build exciting products that we're passionate about, but we also get to get to meet some of the people that like like Vinny said like these people like I grew up listening to them or I'm fans of their music and yet when we meet them they're fans of us so it's just it's it's interesting but that would be nice. um yeah so that's opened up the doors uh to be able to create great um great content like most recently we we were involved with uh Daddy Yankee and Pitbull's um uh latest single Hot um, and then we did a couple other songs for them. Um, and that's just all been because of the platform that we have. They also see the benefit. They see, hey, if we partner up with the team over at BPM, then there's, uh, they could potentially help us exploit the, the song to all the DJs. And um, I think now more and more, especially record labels, and we see this more as we start to develop products that cater to the record labels specifically. Um, they see the importance of how important is the DJ when it comes to breaking music. Um, and it all starts with the DJ. Obviously now with, with streaming, people have access to the content much quicker. 
um but the djs still play a big role because the djs are amplifying that song at the club that's what uh, a lot of the people are at night and so so yeah yeah well so i think that that is amazing that you're doing that and I, what always amazes me and i don't know why because i hear this story over and over and over again is that this these creatives and these entertainers are really good business people and they're smart and they're looking at things like these new technologies they don't just sit on their hands and go okay well i made it i'm not going to keep learning so that's one thing. But the other thing I wanted to ask you was, how are you getting the word out? Is it through relationships mostly, or do you have like a social media presence? How are you letting people know about your platform? Um, I, so for the platform, I, I believe that um, we have a great marketing team. That's, there's, um, there's close to 35 people in, inside, our, inside our office right now, just constantly figuring out how to push the product. Um, so we push the product through different mediums, you know, social media and, and relationships, but we've been in business for 10 years now. Um, so we, we rebranded, uh, most recently, uh, we work with a, a top agency out of New York city to, to rebrand and just share the story of the brand, how really it's matured into a whole new business model where now we're just going after all music creators, not just the DJs. Mm -hmm. And has it been hard to get people to adopt this kind of cross between creativity and tech? I think it's a natural transition just because uh, oftentimes um, we find that producers are becoming DJs and DJs are becoming producers. It's just a natural, um, like if you want to progress in your career. And then now DJs are creating their own podcasts or, you know, or just I realized, so I'm a car enthusiast, also a watch enthusiast. And so I'm in different circles um, of just the lifestyle and culture. And I realized that so many people are just really passionate about music, like music connects people in many different ways and from all levels of, of, of just different people. And I think that, that oftentimes I always hear like, oh, you run a music company. I've always wanted to be a DJ or I used to produce or I always used to play, make playlists for my parties. I hear that like every time I'm in a different circle. Um, and, and so what I think that here with BPM is we're just really seeing that with social media and people are utilizing music more than ever and people are becoming content creators now more than before mm -hmm. so and you, so oh sorry can you did you have a question yeah no i was just gonna you know piggyback off of what a rock is saying you know i think particularly djs when covid happened they were they were forced into a different space they had to shift you know parameters in terms of you know creating so like there were no clubs, there were no live events. And I think that forced a lot of people, at least a lot of the DJ friends that I know into other facets of content creation. So platforms like this are great because I feel like it helps the DJ evolve, right? Whereas before those resources may have not been there. So I, I love what you're doing. I think it's a very dope idea. Thank you. And you know, what's funny about uh, COVID is this. So when COVID hit, we were, we, we were kind of, um, we cut we scaled back our staffing because we didn't know what was going to happen i mean our core customer base is, is djs and they're, everybody's unemployed globally right so but interesting enough is that covid was the time that um the djs were able to spend the most time organizing and discovering new, new music more than before and we realized that because by asking several different people and just studying the behavior of, of the website um, is that oftentimes DJs don't really want to discover music. They just want to get the latest songs and then get to their gig. And it almost becomes homework to them discovering music. And so one of the things here at BPM is we really want to change the way DJs discover music and take away that homework factor. And we know they're listening to music every day. They're just not listening to it on BPM. They listen to it on Spotify. 
And so what we want to do is we want to take that out of the equation and say, hey, um, you're already doing it every day. We got to make it simple enough so that it doesn't become homework for you. Because um, during COVID, that's what everybody was doing, organizing their files, getting getting the opportunity to finally discover music and spend time on the platform and all that. And so, so that happened was uh, during COVID. That's what DJs were doing um, on a global level. Yeah, COVID changed a lot of things. Unfortunately, we're out of time for this segment. We're good, but don't go away because we're going to come back. And we're going to ask a question of everybody. And I figured out what the question is going to be. We're going to start with Vinny when we get back. Um, but what website works best for you if people want to find you, A-Rocks? Uh, my personal one is A-Rocks World. It's A-R-O-C-K-S world.com. And then um, our music services uh, recently got moved to bpmmusic.io. Okay. And there you can learn everything about all the products that we have. Okay, well, don't go away because we still have a really fun part of the show coming up after this break where we ask everybody the same question and we see what, what people's opinions are. So you are listening to Passage to Profit, Road to Entrepreneurship with Kenya Gibson sitting in for Richard Gearhart, Elizabeth Gearhart, and our special guest today, see if I can say his name without messing it up, Vinny Potestivo. Emmy Award-winning media advisor and talent development act exec. And if you missed any of the show, it's we've really had a great time. It's on our podcast tomorrow. And of course, this whole show has been about podcasting and media and everything. I guess that's where the world's going. But we'll be right back. And well, we just had a great conversation with Angel Castillo, who is the creator and founder of BPM Music. And this has been an amazing show today. And we have a little bit of a roundtable question that we're going to answer before we all tap out. Right. So the question is, and we're going to start with Vinny, who's our guest. Who is your favorite musician or what? what's the last concert you went to? All right. All right. I got to give a shout out to Mandy Moore, by the way. I got to see her on tour uh, while she was pregnant. She just had a, she just had a baby. See, I have to give a shout out to the independent voices out there. It's really cool. And I, was, I think A-Rock can really... It's really cool now in the year 2022 to look at some of our friends who started off signed to these deals where they weren't getting paid. They were getting zero publishing rights and that are now killing it because they took they believe in themselves and they took that independent leap. So a big shout out to Mandy Moore for doing it her way. OK, excellent. What about you, Kurt? Uh, the last concert I saw was I was in Lake Tahoe. Uh, doing a triathlon and there was a group that I used to like in high school co college or high school called Southern Culture on the Skids who happened to be playing in a tiny hotel and uh, I went to see them and that was uh, just a few months ago so that was <clears throat> that was fun so excellent go. okay a rock um it was Bad Bunny and then prior to that Coldplay and both concerts were amazing stadiums completely sold out both days Okay, great. Kenya. So for me, I would have to say my favorite female rapper is Nicki Minaj behind Foxy Brown. She's like, they're like tied for me. And I've had the opportunity to see her at Powerhouse, right? So that's super exciting and was in there with all the barbs going crazy. All right, great. <laughs> so for me, the last concert we saw is also one of my very favorite performers on earth. And it was Elton John. And it was great. He was beyond amazing I mean he's such a performer but it was at a huge venue so that kind of made it not as much fun right because that it was at um giant stadium in New York or in New Jersey actually but um so that it was he himself was amazing the venue was not great but before that Richard and I had gone to see one of his favorite bands so we went and saw the Gin Blossoms and Bare Naked Ladies in this small venue in Central Park called Summer Stage and that was so cool because the venue was awesome and the sound was really good. So, I mean, it, it was it was fun. I love performers. I love watching performances. I think everybody here is doing the world a favor by bringing music and performance to us, to the rest of us. And I can only be jealous because when I start singing, the cat runs from the room. <laughs> so, at that, uh, do you want to wrap us up, Kenya? Sure, I will. I will try. Uh, so do I run through everybody's uh, email or contact information? Is that how we typically do it? Just oh, usually, my... 
oh, wait, help usually my brain. I, usually I do that, um, but you oh, can okay. if you want to. Do you have it right there in front of you? I mean, I don't necessarily have to do that, but I, what do you, I'm just trying to think of what Richard usually says. Okay, so usually, so we go through that and then Richard usually says something snarky. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe I'll but, try to run through the people without, without the snarky. <laughs> yeah, do you want to, do you want to, so Richard and I discuss, we run through the um, websites, but we discuss it a little bit. So, oh, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I can, I can kick it off and then we can just. Yeah, so let's, okay. So yeah, so final word about everybody kind of, okay. Yeah. So three, two, one. So really awesome show today uh, here on Passage to Profit. We got a chance to hear from Vinny Postivo. I hope I said that right. And Potestivo, Vinny was a I think. Potestivo. I keep, I messed it up. Sorry, Vinny. But, but Vinny was amazing and just talked about all these great gems when it comes to getting your podcast out there, getting your personal brand out there, how to leverage you know, visibility in the celebrity space. So lots of good note taking for sure on today's show. And you can find him at vpetalent.com. And he has a podcast and the name of it is really unusual and mysterious. It's called I have a podcast.com. <laughs> and uh, yes, he was just a joy to have on the show and gave, if you did not hear him, you, if you want to have a podcast, if you want to get noticed, he gave us real world specific advice that like I'm going to start using as soon as I can. So you should go back and listen to that to hear what he what he gave away for free. I can only imagine what it's like to actually work with him one on one. So and then our yeah, next this is I was just going to say this is definitely a downloadable podcast. Absolutely. So who is our next presenter then? So Kurt Davis, right, with KD Alive and Sunrise Ventures. So he had some great you know, conversations about just culture and travel and the space of well-being. And we're excited to see what he's going to continue to create in that space for those of us who are less traveled and we can learn from him. And you can find him at kdalive.com. He's also got sunriseventures.co and kakumaventures.com. I hope I said that right. And a book. We can't and forget about the book. Right. And Let's find the name of his book here. Two books. Two, two books. books. What are your two books, Kurt? One's called Finding Soul from Silicon Valley to Africa. And the other one's called Navigate to the Lighthouse, a Silicon Valley Guide to Executing Global Deals. Excellent. And then our final presenter, Kenya, was? Is Angel A. Rock. I got it right this time. Castillo, who is the presenter. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got to mess. I messed it up. Oh, I messed it up. Let me go back. Edit, edit, edit. All right. So <laughs> your your last line was Kenya, who is Angel A. Rock Castillo, who is the founder and creator of BPM Music and BPM Supreme. He's helping DJs and creators in the music space with his innovative platform. So you want to make sure that you check him out at bpmmusic.io. Excellent. He's also got bpmsupreme.com and A. Rock's world.com so yeah so that was a great show so kenya you get to do our thank yous wow who do we thank everybody right so noah fleischman who is our producer and also has a segment on passage to profit as well noah's retrospect retrospective got that and uh alicia morrissey who is our program coordinator mark wilson who is our syndication manager and Elizabeth and Richard Gearhart for allowing me to be a part of this Passage to Profit team. Did I get oh, everybody? You did. We love having you. And don't forget to find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And if you want to see what everybody looks like, I, mean, I always like to watch YouTube, see what people look like. But as I said, our podcast will be out tomorrow. So join us next week for another show of Passage to Profit, Road to Entrepreneurship. Thank you all for listening and thanks to all of our participants. We'll see you next week.